today on the Tear Sheet Podcast. You know, as, as we embarked upon, um, you know, building out this sort of uh, formal innovation program with, with, within Western Union, more formal innovation and thinking about how to look, uh, you know, outside for innovation and partner outside. We looked at a number of different types of accelerators, um, you know, or how can we work with venture capital? How can we get in, you know, how can we get involved in that ecosystem? Um, and, you know, what we found when we, when we first started talking with Techstars, I remember uh, my boss and I actually drove up to Boulder, Colorado. So we're, we're in Denver and the Techstars headquarters happens to be in Boulder. So about 30 minutes away, mm. we sat, sat down with David Brown, one of the co-CEOs um, and, and a couple of other folks from Techstars. Um, it, it just, I mean, it just clicked. Like we, we, we left really excited about the, the program. It was, it just felt like there was a depth to the program that we weren't seeing anywhere else. Welcome to the Tearsheet Podcast. I'm Tearsheet Editor-in-Chief, Zach Miller. When Western Union formally began building out its connection to the fintech community, it partnered with Techstars, a well-respected accelerator in Boulder, Colorado. The Techstars and Western Union Accelerator focuses on startups looking to shape the future of how money moves, from artificial intelligence and machine learning to crypto and blockchain. Joining me on the podcast are two leaders of the program, Tyler McPherson Wyman is the Global VP of Corporate Strategy and Development at Western Union, and El Bruno is Managing Director for the Techstars and Western Union Accelerator. We discuss the decision behind launching an accelerator and the nature of the Western Union and Techstars partnership. We dive into the role the accelerator plays in Western Union's innovation program and how both partners measure the success of the program. Let's go. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Tyler McPherson Wyman. I am head of strategy and innovation at Western Union. I've uh, been with the company for about 12 years uh, in various functions and role, but we're, we're right now focusing on how, how I can uh, help drive innovation in the company and, and, and move Western Union forward. Wonderful. Welcome. Elle, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Sure. My name is Elle Bruno. Uh, I am the managing director of the Techstars Western Union program. And I was an entrepreneur in residence of our 2020 program previously. Fantastic. Um, so I'd like you both to actually answer this question. We can start with Tyler. Like, why create an accelerator? Yeah, it, it pretty uh, pretty straightforward. It's, it's it's really that it helps us think about innovation from a different perspective. Uh, let's let's say sort of from the outside in. You know, we, we've got a long history of innovating at this company. I think we've been around somewhere around 170 years or so. So long history of innovation, but, uh, and, and we can certainly continue to drive innovation from within and enhance our products and services, find new ways to move money, so on and so forth. Uh, but, you know, there, there are a lot of innovators and founders out there thinking about completely new and in, innovative ways to do things, things that can help pro, you know, complement what we do. And, and we really wanted to tap into some of that thinking to benefit ultimately our customers is really the core of it. Got it, L, do, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, you know, I think the Western Union partnership was a very obvious one to us. You know, the fintech space is a very interesting and exciting space to be in right now. And, you know, when we think through who our thought partners are going to be, uh, when we built out these accelerator programs, you know, we really saw Western Union as, you know, the foremost innovators uh, in the space. And so that marriage between, you know, early stage founders um, and, you know, this team at Western Union who just has such depth and breadth in the fintech space, uh, it felt pretty obvious to us that it would be a great pairing. It, it makes a lot of sense. Um, from Techstars perspective, have you, do, do you have this partnership model with other financial services institutions? Um, we have had one in the past. We do not currently. So Western Union um, is the only fintech uh, accelerator program we have right now. Interesting. So it's like a big experiment. Uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know if I would call it an experiment, but yeah. I mean that I, I in guess, a positive way, obviously. Yes, yeah. yes, for sure. I mean, you know, uh, when you work together with another company for the first time, I guess you, mm -hmm. you could definitely call it an experiment. Um, back to Tyler, um, you mentioned um, sort of innovation from within, and this is a way for Western Union to, to tap into innovation outside the company. Can you talk about the role that the accelerator plays in Western Union's overall innovation program? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the way I think about it is, is it really just complements or adds on to our, the internal or outside in innovation that we do, or sorry, inside out innovation that we do. So uh, it complements all of our product development uh, efforts. 
uh, you know, and it, it just really, again, helps us bring a different dimension of outside in, in thinking. Uh, we, we sort of think of it as a supplement to, to our, to help drive a different set of initiatives that, that kind of uh, support our portfolio of innovation. Um, and it helps us look a little bit further into the future, right? I, I think large companies have a tendency to think, um, you know, more about uh, innovation that is is complementary to or close sorry close into you know what we do today right it's just sort of a natural thing we, we we're constantly talking with our customers listening to our customers and really trying to find ways to improve what we already do uh, not to say we're not innovating and driving other new products but but this really just helps us think totally differently and mm -hmm. and again a little bit further out into the future are there other formal components of um, Western Union's innovation program? I use that term because that's a term a lot of other financial institutions use, like they have innovation group. Um, it may include corporate venture capital. It may include um, partnerships or, or an accelerated program like you guys are running. Like, are there other formalized parts to that? Yeah, we, we, we don't have a, a you know, venture capital arm uh, as mm -hmm. such, but um, we do have uh, you know, formal product development teams that, that are driving innovation on our existing products. And then um, you know, my group and, and the function that I work within, uh, we do a lot of uh, just internal development uh, as well as partnership innovation. Uh, so um, you know, we, we formally are, are building out new capabilities and we are actively uh, you know, working with external partners, small companies, large companies alike. So not just, just startups, but both small and large companies to find uh, new products that we can bring to market, uh, you know, uh, either that we develop or through partnerships. So can you give an example of, um, of something like that, that that's come to market through, through yeah, this sure. type of, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, so um, and we actually announced this not so long ago, we're working with AXA in France uh, and bringing uh, an insurance product uh, to our customers jointly, um, uh, a continuity of, of income insurance that really complements nicely our, uh, our money transfer product, right? So uh, receivers depend on money transfer uh, receipts uh, that, that the senders provide to them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. for, for their daily livelihood in, in many ways, uh, whether it's just to pay bills, buy groceries, uh, pay for education, et cetera. So uh, having that continuity of income insurance um, along with uh, the, the, the ongoing uh, flow of money that comes to them is, is really important for peace of mind. So, um, so yeah, so that's, a, that's just one example. Great. Um, El, from, from, from your perspective, um, what kind of metrics do you use to see if the, if the, if the program is working? How do you judge success for the, for the accelerator? Sure. You know, it's, it's a great question. And, you know, when we look at the startup space, you know, you really are looking eight to 10 years out to measure success mm -hmm. of a company and see how they do down the road. So, you know, shorter term uh, KPIs are tend to be a little bit more qualitative. Uh, you know, we do look at MPS scores, of course, and, you know, feedback from the founders after they've exited the program. Uh, that to us is, is the most important in the short, ter short term. And then, you know, it's, it's really a, a waiting game at that point to see, you know, what, what story is told for each of our founders. Got it. And, and Tyler, what about you? How, do, how does Western Union judge success? Yeah, so we, you know, as we you know, in, embarked on, on this partnership with, with Techstars, we thought a lot about that. And, and we, we laid out three, um, three metrics of success for us. Um, and, and again, very, very explicit and sort of, I'll call it in order of importance too. So first we're looking to enhance our culture of innovation. Uh, like I mentioned, we've, we've got a great culture of innovation, I think already, and we've been around for, for you know, over a century. Um, but for us, it was, again, how can we drive that outside in thinking, new ways of thinking. Uh, and we measure this through sort of the level of interaction with the startups and their founders um, and, and our organization. Uh, and a key element to that interaction is the mentorship program 
uh, that or, or the mentorship element of the program that the TechStars runs. In fact, it was one of the key key reasons we were so attracted to the TechStars program versus maybe some other less engaged sort of accelerator type models. So, um, you know, our mentors help the founders solve problems, bring industry expertise, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, but they bring us that new way of thinking, how, how they move fast, fail fast, you know, all those great things that, that startups have. So that's the first thing is helping drive that or enhance our culture of innovation. Uh, second, we're looking to generate commercial results through working with startups. Um, you know, we're a for-profit company, um, and so we're pushing to run pilots, proof of concept tests, uh, and hope hope to eventually leverage startups' capabilities to help us do things, you know, better, faster, cheaper, or take um, new solutions to market to help our customers. Uh, so that's the second um, measure of success. And then third, or lastly, of course, we hope to get a return on our investment. Uh, like Elle mentioned, you know, we look out very much the long-term for that. So that's not a short-term metric, it's the eight, 10 year kind of thing. Um, but of course it aligns our, it aligns our objectives with not only the companies, but also, you know, the startups, but also tech stars. That makes a lot of sense. And and so while I've got you, Tyler, like wh what kind of companies are you targeting? Like I'm, I'm looking here for like, how mature are they? What, what stage uh, of maturity are they in? Um, where they based um, any factors that you use for, for recruiting? Yeah, so um, so uh, specifically, you know, this is an early stage startup type program. Um, we're looking for for early stage startups, uh, pre you know seed or you know pre sort of uh, A series type funding, right? So these are seed stage type startups typically, and that's aligned with what TechStars does. Mm -hmm. um, and and in terms of the types of companies, uh, well, we're looking for, certainly for diversity geographically. Um, we're looking for. Uh, you know, diversity in founders. Um, you know, we 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 really believe that you know uh, founders from under underrepresented groups, founders from countries all all around the world, are important to us, right? We we are probably um, you know we we as a company probably serve one of the most diverse base of customers of any any large company in the world, right? We operate in two hundred countries and territories, uh, and so it's important for us that. Uh, the blend of the, the, the types of, of founders and companies sort of match, if you will, to some degree, our diverse customer base. Um, so, so that's important for us. And, and we buy into this mantra that Techstars has, you know, just in terms of the core sort of what these, these founders have, um, you know, that it's team, 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 product market, right? So, you know, we, we want founders that have this desire, this hustle, this grit to make it happen. Uh, and, you know, and founders that either have demonstrated that or we think have that potential. Um, so so the, the types of founders are very important to us. Now, in terms of the types of companies, um, broadly, I would say there are probably three sort of types of companies. First, we want um, customers or, or sorry, cut companies that potentially can help us uh, make one of our core functions operate better, faster, cheaper, right? So companies like in the current class, logic Custer to help enhance our pricing capabilities or Heights Labs in compliance, right? Um, so that's that's sort of the one theme of types of companies. Second, we're looking for companies that are developing um, innovations that could potentially be, be complementary products or services that we think we could offer our customers and partnerships. So in this year's class, for example, Line or Rise Capital. Uh, and, and these are good, good examples of companies that like Woo are trying to help drive financial inclusion. So that's that's important for us as well, companies that are interested in, in driving financial inclusion. And then third, or lastly, um, we're looking for companies that we think might be disruptive in our space, you know, companies that are finding interesting and new innovative ways, uh, how they move money, you know, cross border, cross currency. Um, so yeah, so those are the three broad themes and, and, and in terms of the types of founders we're interested in. Those themes make a lot of sense. El, do you have to, to add to that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we are known as an early stage accelerator, uh, but it really depends what the founders and the companies are looking to get out of the program. You mm -hmm. know, many come in for access to mentors and network um, and, you know, some come in for access to investment. And then there are others who, you know, are really looking for guidance on, on how to, to build their companies. Uh, you know, from from the ground up and, you know, a, a combination of all of the above. It's the companies um, that are focused on the latter, though, that you know tend to be maybe even a little bit later stage uh, and still take interest in the program. You know, a, a great example of that is GigWage, which is a, a modern uh, payments platform for the gig economy. They're five years in. Uh, they were closing a, a six million dollar plus round 
uh, during the program. So they, they mm -hmm. were a little bit later stage. Um, and really, again, they didn't, they didn't need the network or the investment strategy as much. Um, they were just looking to, to understand how to build better and stronger and faster. Um, so not necessarily stage dependent, but, but certainly on, on the early side. Um, and, you know, it's hard to say like what kind of trends we're looking for, right? Because if the trend has already happened, we consider ourselves mm. maybe to be behind on it. Right. Right. So, uh, we look at what the problem is that they're solving, of course, you know, and do we see it, uh, as a worthwhile problem to solve, or if somebody's already solving it, are they doing it in a better way? But it ultimately, it does come down to the founders, as Tyler mentioned, you know, you are looking at team, 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 first and foremost, and there's, there's a lot we look for, you know, we spend a lot of time with founders, you know, the goal is to talk to between 800 and 1000 founders wow. uh, before we launch, launch the program. So that's what I'll be spending most of the next six months doing. Uh, and, you know, we try to narrow that group down to 10. So, you know, for me personally, I'm really looking at you know, EQ and grit. Mm -hmm. I think those are, you know, the two most important traits in a founder, which I'm, I'm sure you've heard many times before. And by EQ, I mean, simply, you know, just a strong self-awareness around uh, your, your strengths and weaknesses and the team you build around yourself it is very important, uh, it becomes more important even in the long term. Um, and then grit, you know, people who are seeking us out, who really have something to gain from the program. Um, and with that said, you know, going on into the diversity um, topic that Tyler brought up, that, that is really hugely important to both of our companies. Uh, and so it's not just focusing on, you know, companies that are referred to us, right? It's the people who reach out on LinkedIn who don't have any mutual connections with me. You know, those are the people that I want to talk to who don't necessarily have that ecosystem advantage going into it. Um, and so when we say diversity, uh, of course, we mean racial diversity. And, and I think we did a really good job of that in the 2020 program uh, for 2021. Uh, I'd like to really focus on gender diversity. As we know, women in, in fintech, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement there, uh, as well as socioeconomic diversity. I think the um, startup ecosystem just tends to, to favor the wealthy, right? In that, you know, venture capitalists um, are, again, sourcing people from their own networks. Um, and so I'd, I'm really working towards ways uh, to gain more diversity around socioeconomic status as well. Uh, that's really interesting. So El, while, while I've got you, um, I think it's a good time to talk about what um, participants in the Accelerator get. Can you talk about, I guess, the, the mechanics uh, of the program? Sure. So uh, they, we make a financial investment in the companies um, in exchange for equity uh, right when the program begins. Um, and then they go through a 13 week accelerator. And as I referenced earlier, it's kind of, it's soup to nuts. It's everything about building a company um, from, you know, sales and marketing to financial modeling to uh, you know, how to speak with investors and, and investment terms and, and that sort of thing. So we really cover almost every topic you can, you can imagine. And then, you know, on, on the softer side of things, we do things like a weekly uh, CEO chat. So we bring in CEOs um, that come and share their stories. And, and it's really important for us to have these founders kind of share uh, just as much about the failures as the successes, um, mm. again, show that vulnerability and help our founders understand that it's not all roses uh, along the way. Um, and then we offer this uh, really incredible mentor program. So we do a week called Mentor Madness, and we pair about 90 uh, mentors that are, you know, subject matter experts across the board. Uh, with our founders. And from there, they choose five or six lead mentors to kind of guide them throughout the program, but beyond as well. And, you know, the feedback from our founders has been that the, the mentor program has uh, been very, very valuable to them, excuse me. Um, and in that mentor program, we actually have several Western Union mentors, mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome, uh, you know, for one of our, our early stage founders to 
be able to, you know, talk to the chief compliance officer of Western Union, you know, every other week is, is, is pretty valuable for, for him or her. Um, and then we do an investor week. We did that for the first time this year. Uh, you know, obviously with COVID, we're, we're shifting, we're making a lot of changes to the program. It wasn't in person for the first time this year. And so that was great. You know, each of our founders had conversations with around 20 investors on average, kind of in a, in a speed dating format, if you will. Uh, and that, that was a huge success. So uh, long answer, but a, a pretty detailed program. And we, we like to think we cover uh, almost everything. <laughs> That sounds great. Um, and the remaining time that we have, Tyler, this is for you. Um, and you mentioned this, I guess, in, in one of your earlier answers. Um, I'm curious uh, to know a little bit more about the partnership. Why Western Union? Why Techstars? And, and how it came to be? Essentially, what, the, what is the dynamic between why you guys chose each other and, and how that works together? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, as, as we embarked upon, um, you know, building out this sort of a formal innovation program within Western Union, more formal innovation and thinking about how to look, uh, you know, outside for innovation and partner outside. We looked at a number of different types of accelerators, um, you know, or how can we work with venture capital? How can we get in, you know, how can we get involved in that ecosystem? Um, and, you know, what we found when we, when we first started talking with Techstars, I remember uh, my boss and I, actually drove up to Boulder, Colorado. So we're, we're in Denver, the Techstars headquarters happens to be in Boulder, so about 30 minutes away. Mm. We sat, sat down with David Brown, one of the co-CEOs, um, and, and a couple of other folks from Techstars. Um, it, it just, I mean, it just clicked. Like we, we, we left really excited about the, the program. It was, it just felt like there was a depth to the program that we weren't seeing anywhere else. And, and, and by depth, I mean, a lot of what Al just described. Um, you know this uh, this program just uh, dives in really deep with 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 these companies. It's soup to nuts. Um, you know the idea of the mentoring uh, and the interaction that that we would have felt really really just like a perfect fit for us in terms of helping drive our culture of innovation. Uh, El mentioned the mentoring program and, and the Western Union mentors. Uh, that's turned out to be just hugely beneficial for us. Um, you know our mentors. Uh, it, it gets them excited. Um, it uh, you know it, it it gets them thinking, gets sort of their juices flowing. So it's just a great way to you know bring that excitement of of what you know startups have into our organization. So that felt really good. Um, so yeah, so the recipe just felt like it works, right? They um, they have not only what we thought was the right sort of programmatic structure and the mentoring and so forth, um, but beyond that, TechStars has this. Uh, I would say what feels like an unparalleled network um, in the startup world, right? They're, they're just very well known. So when it comes to recruiting companies, um, you know, we, we can leverage that network very well. Uh, when it comes to um, accessing, uh, you know, other startups in their program, uh, right? So not just the, the, the 10 that come through our class every year, but the 2000 plus, I think it is, uh, startups that, that have been through their program. Um, we've had conversations with some of those companies about working together. Um, so yeah, so the recipe just felt right. Um, the culture felt right. The network felt, uh, you know, unmatched. It's not something we could replicate uh, if we wanted to try to do something like this on our own. So the recipe, the experience, the network, et cetera, it just felt, it just all felt really good. And, you know, it's, it's proven to, to play out like we had hoped. Um, all of those things work very well. Uh, our teams enjoy working with with their team uh, and 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 the founders, um, and uh, it's just worked really well. Sounds like a good recipe. El, do you have something you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think Tyler summed it up well. Um, the the feeling the feeling is mutual on, on our end. Well, it sounds like a great partnership, and I, I didn't realize that you guys were were so close geographically. That works out really well. Yeah. It does. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to do it in person again one day. <laughs> yeah, one day we'll get, we'll get there soon. Yeah, you know, Tyler, we, thanks we for joining us. Le- oh, sorry, we were, we were able to leverage that a lot last year when it was in person. Uh, you know, uh, David Cohen and David Brown would come down mm-hmm. and interact with our CEO, Hickman Ersek, and 
yeah, we had our board of directors here and, and we got to meet. And, you know, so it was, it was great. We certainly look forward to getting back to live programs, um, even though it's been an interesting uh, journey this year with the, um, the virtual program. In fact, we, we definitely look forward to that. I can imagine. Thank you both for joining us on the Tearsheet Podcast today. Thank you. Thank you.